Chapter 12 starts off by discussing the difference between partial and general equilibrium. And what you see, partial equilibrium is not going to be covered very much in AGEC 1, because we're going to cover it more in depth in AGEC 2. But what, essentially what it does is it looks at the effects that changes have on individual markets. It's assuming that everything else is going to remain constant. That's a phrase known as seratus paribus, holding all else constant. So it's going to look at just specific markets. And it's going to assume that all markets are independent of each other. And that those markets are actually small enough that they can be ignored. Such as how would the effect or how would the change in wheat price affect the price of bread? Or something like that. Well, they're saying that those markets are going to be independent of each other. And what effects that do occur are small enough that they can be ignored. So let's look a little bit at what partial equilibrium would be. Partial equilibrium would look at what would happen if we performed acreage control of wheat? What would happen to the supply of wheat? What would happen to the price of wheat? And here we're looking at in just one independent market of just wheat. We're ignoring what would happen to bread price. We're ignoring what would happen to prices of other commodities. We're ignoring what would happen to employment or GDP. You see, if we dive into it and we say that we are actually going to reduce the supply of wheat, and if we're reducing the supply of wheat, then we don't need as many workers. So unemployment is going to be affected. And if we're reducing the supply of wheat, it raises the prices of wheat, and wheat is an intermediate good used in bread, so bread price comes up. And they can also affect other commodities. So if we are reducing the amount of acreage that is allowed to be planted in wheat, it might open up the doors to allow more acreage being planted in a different type of commodity. So now we're affecting other commodities as well. It might also be affecting GDP, because GDP is the, going to be the gross domestic product, which is what we're going to learn about a little bit later, which is the sum of all final goods and services. So GDP is actually going to be affected as well. Well, you see with partial equilibrium, we are going to ignore all of these other markets. We're going to look at just how wheat affects wheat. And all these markets are independent of each other. Now, if we compare that to general equilibrium, general equilibrium is where markets are interdependent. And partial equilibrium, they're independent. But with general equilibrium, they're interdependent meaning that everything depends on everything else. You see, we know that the other commodities, price of bread, unemployment, and GDP is all going to be affected by this acreage control of wheat. So with general equilibrium, we look at how all of this is affected, not just one individual market. So we know that everything depends on everything else. So with the general equilibrium, we're now looking at the equilibrium between producers and consumers, but also the equilibrium between products and money markets. And we're going to focus more on the general equilibrium in macroeconomics, which is the focus of this course. So to kind of shed light on what we're going to be talking about here, one-fifth of the nation's output, one-fifth, so 20% of the nation's output, of products and services that we produce is tied to the US food and fiber industry. So if one-fifth of the nation's economy is tied back to the food and fiber industry, a shock in the agricultural industry could have drastic impacts on the economy. If the agricultural industry was greatly shocked, it would have impacts on the whole economy, not just on the agricultural industry. By the same token, a shock in the macro economy and the whole economy of the United States would have drastic impacts on the agricultural industry. Just to kind of give that an example of that is what if interest rates started increasing drastically? Well, now if interest rates are increasing, farmers are not going to be going out and buying new equipment, which could cause them to not produce as many crops, having an, a, a drastic impact on the agricultural industry itself. So what we need to know is that we're going to focus on general equilibrium from here on out. And general equilibrium understands and looks at how different markets are all interdependent 
and how everything depends on everything else.